It's here. Amazing Intel GPU lineup is being leaked. Welcome to the Product Review Hub. Let's go and find out all we know. Some of the specifications of the company's own graphics processing unit, which is slated to be introduced soon, may have been mistakenly leaked by Intel's new graphics management software. In a press statement issued today, Intel revealed that the first phase of its Arc A series graphics will be made available to the public in the form of discrete mobile GPUs that would be used in a wide range of laptops. Additionally, Intel showcased its new Arc Control, a software center for its Arc and Iris XE GPUs that combines hardware and software to provide an all-in-one solution for GPU management. This was effectively Intel's response to NVIDIA's GeForce Experience and AMD's Radeon software, which were both published at the same time as the GeForce Experience and Radeon software respectively. At the end of the presentation, Intel gave us a sneak peek at the product that everyone has been waiting for, Arc Desktop Graphics Cards, which were officially launched. B of now, the teaser highlighted what is believed to be the top-end SKU from Intel's Arc Desktop Portfolio, which is referred to as a Xeon E5 processor. At the very least, we got a glimpse of the likely OEM or reference design for Arc Alchemist desktop GPUs, as well as the mystery limited edition GPU that was revealed earlier this year. Intel may have smuggled in a minor tease somewhere else in the program, despite the fact that we didn't get any additional information beyond the aesthetics and a release date of summer 2022 during the presentation. Is the Arc desktop GPU truly a desktop graphics processor? Besides demonstrating its new Arc control software, which includes the ability to monitor system performance as one of its capabilities, Intel also showcased its new Arc control software, which was previously reported. The information accessible includes CPU and GPU use as well as temperatures, fan speeds and clock speeds, among other things. Even though this tab contains statistics that correspond to an Arc mobile GPU that was announced on the same day as the event where it was demonstrated, some of the statistics displayed in this tab do not correspond to any Arc mobile GPU that was demonstrated in this tab. This is an interesting fact to note. A few outliers stuck out in particular, the GPU power, GPU clock and VRAM clock speed, all of which indicate that we were most likely looking at the specifications of an Arc desktop graphics card which was exactly what we were looking at. Furthermore, it is not just any Arc desktop GPU but rather the company's highest end flagship SKU which is the most expensive in the company's lineup. It is nearly impossible to get the types of figures that these measurements were achieving with laptop graphics, although this does not exclude them from being achieved at all in some circumstances. Intel's Arc A780 desktop GPU is running at a clock speed of 2200 to 2250 MHz with over 99% utilization in the screenshots attached above, which is extraordinarily high for a laptop given the limited thermal headroom available in a mobile chassis. Intel's future flagship desktop GPU based on the ACM G10 die, the A780 is expected to have a boost clock similar to that of the A780 according to current speculation. It is necessary to conduct additional research. In addition to Geekbench results, the Intel A350M has received results from the OpenCL test which revealed that the mobile GPU can function at a maximum frequency of 2200 MHz while running the OpenCL test on the platform. With only 1150 MHz as its clock base, the Arc A350M CPU has a substantial disparity between its base and boost speeds, resulting in a significant discrepancy between its base and boost speeds. Although the maximum clock speed is 2200 MHz, it's important to remember that this is a maximum. According to an interview conducted earlier this year, Intel's Tom Peterson claimed that the highest boost frequency for their GPUs is somewhat lower than the maximum boost clock that the GPUs are capable of hitting. It is important to note that the maximum boost clock specified by a manufacturer is the most restricted boost frequency that the GPU is capable of reaching, suggesting that the actual peak boost clock can be far higher than the factory setting. Also similar to how NVIDIA regulates the boost clocks for their graphics processing units is how this is accomplished. To some extent, this confirms, don't you think, that the Arc A350M, the only GPU to be launched at the event, is most likely the GPU depicted in those screenshots? No, and the manner by which we discover this is by assessing the processing power and performance of the graphics processing unit. Taking a look at the screenshot, it appears that the GPU is drawing 175 watts. This is not a surprise development, for the simple reason that such value is not only in the top echelon of GPU TDPs, but it also does not match that of the Arc A350M, we can rule it out as a candidate for the position. 
At the time, there is just one graphics processing unit on the planet that is capable of achieving that level of computing power. Another point to mention is that the GPU is the RTX 3080 Ti Mobile, which has a boost clock of 150 watt plus, but still consumes 175 watts, which is at the upper end of the spectrum for a GPU of this caliber. Following up on prior statements, it's predicted that the upcoming Arc A770M laptop GPU, which will serve as a flagship Arc A series mobile offering, would feature a maximum GPU power of 150 watts, indicating that we will not be seeing another mobile SKU at this time. Nonetheless, it's important to keep in mind that laptops that are equipped with both Intel TPUs and GPUs can take advantage of Intel Deep Link technologies, one of which is dynamic power share in order to maximize their overall performance. It is possible to use this technology to dynamically alter and control the power of a laptop so that it can deliver adequate power to both its CPU and GPU by dividing the total amount of power available between the two. Theoretically, this might increase the TGP of the Arc A770 Maximum M from 150 watts to more than 150 watts, bringing it closer to 175 watts specified by the manufacturer. As furthermore, according to 3D Center, when we look at the 175 watt TGP, we're only seeing the raw GPU power, and that with the addition of other components such as memory, the GPU may easily surpass the 200 watt threshold. We're also unsure whether GPU power includes memory or not. As a result, we can only make educated assumptions based on the RAM numbers that we are currently aware of. When it comes to the memory, we can see that the VRAM clock is 1093 MHz, which means that the effective speed of the memory can reach up to 17.5 GB per second, which is just a hair below the GPU clock. The fastest RAM accessible on a mobile GPU, assuming that it is indeed a mobile GPU, in that instance would be the RAM used by the mobile GPU. The fastest mobile GPU now available can only attain 16 gigabytes per second and because memory on mobile GPUs are rarely overclocked, we can estimate that the desktop version of this mobile GPU will at least match or be faster than the RTX 3070 which has a 14 gigabytes per second memory speed at the time of writing. If this is true, only time will tell. The entire situation could have been the result of an accident in which Intel mistakenly disclosed the specifications of a desktop GPU during the presentation for mobile GPUs, or it could have been done on purpose by Intel to in order to arouse curiosity and get people to discuss. Indeed, even our assumption about whether this is a mobile or a desktop GPU is providing Intel with the press and attention they require in order to pique the interest of additional customers. Regardless of whether we're talking about the rumored Intel Arc A780 desktop graphics card or the Arc A770M mobile graphics processor, Intel's Arc A series graphics cards are successfully igniting competition in the graphics card market. Arc A350M laptops are currently available for purchase, with Arc 5 and 7 laptops on the way, indicating that the blue team is slowly but gradually bringing its discrete GPU range to life after years of ideation and development. The ultimate litmus test for Intel will be their desktop graphics processing unit's GPUs, which have been overhyped to the point of oblivion over the past few months. When it comes to graphics processing units, Intel is the third major competitor in the market and it's seeking to not just disrupt the market, but to do so aggressively by offering highly low prices. They are in for a huge treat if their goal is similar to AMD's when they released Ryzen, which was to give competitive performance at a far lower price than the competition. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel for more informational content like this one.